the thing that you are wanting them to give to you is the thing that you most need to give to yourself. That validation, that love, that gets to come from within. That permission slip you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. And then when you, when, you, when you actually gift yourself that love and that acknowledgement, that is when the relationships around, outside of you will shift to reflect back the amount of self-love that you have already cultivated. When we're not consuming so much food, a lot of emotional stuff comes up as well and we're able to see it objectively and allow that to process as well. Um, similar to what we do in a workshop environment, I'm applying to water fasting. Glenn, my man. Good to see you again, bro. It's good. It's, it's good to be good here. It's been a good 18 months. It's been a good 18 months yeah. and we're now switching locations up yep. in your living room here today. Here we are. Uh, for those wondering what's going on here, Glynn was a guest on BDP episode 88, which was December 2018. That's the Bodo Jew podcast. And so it's been a solid two years, not since we've seen each other. We've seen each other yeah. before then, but there's been a lot of growing. Mm -hmm. And for this uh, Eternal Energy podcast, I wanted to have you on, of course, because you're Mr. Conscious. Yeah, uh, I think that's. A, I think I referred to that podcast as Glenn Empowered Money. Yeah, uh, I'm interested to find out if we're still empowered. Yeah, for if sure, we're man. still uh, what's going on. So, even though this is a, even though we've, we've done a podcast together, this audience maybe not knowing a little bit about you. Mm -hmm. So, if you just want to give the casual who you are, what you're about, and what's important to you right now, yeah. you know, just a quick dive for those who have no idea. And then we'll go beneath the surface after that. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Adam, thank you for having me back on your podcast. I must have done okay the first time around. So, 100%. Um, yeah, a bit about me. I'm Glenn Money. Um, I'm a coach and I mainly support men in um, really um, empowering them to be the best versions of themselves and um, creating safe spaces where um, they can experience their anger, their trauma, whatever's um, whatever they've denied from themselves previously. Um, and as well as that, I've also ventured into really supporting people with their health and water fasting as a, a niche, which has been uh, really amazing, the feedback and the amount of people that have been reaching out. It's something that I've really been um, diving deep into myself and embodying and supporting people in that journey has been uh, transformational. And yeah, just been just supporting people with the, the things that I've, I've been diving into. Mm hmm that was very succinct. Yeah. I remember the first time it took a little while, a little while to yeah. get out. Actually, I remember the first time though you were saying that you were coming out of transition mm -hmm. of, of not being the person you wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And so I guess that kind of dives into how you're doing what you're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think we all have like a, an idea in our head of this, this higher version of ourselves and the work really is in, is, um, stepping into that person and embodying the traits and attributes that that higher version of ourselves embodies on a day-to-day -day basis in the choices that we make, in um, the energy we bring to each and every moment. So um, just more working on the embodiment piece of, um, you know, who do I want to be today and what, what does that person, um, how does that person behave? Like asking myself mm -hmm. those powerful questions and then allowing life to just flow through and not, not, been caught up in it to it too much you were coaching uh or you at least i think you were just beginning coaching with yep. the man cave mm -hmm. is that still going on that is and still going on because when i'm as we've been setting up here for uh, uh for a good minute getting this mobile kit <laughs> going so we had a bit of time to discuss things uh beforehand and you were mentioning that uh, i think you had a coaching session last week mm -hmm. uh how's the how's that space going for you right now it's uh it's been amazing and it's been even more necessary necessary with the the times that we're in um a lot of people have been you know out of work or locked down at home and have mm. been forced to really be with themselves in a new way and self inquire and in that in that process uh, there's been a lot of men that have reached out that have needed that support um mm. to really um navigate these challenging times for a, a lot of people so it's definitely picked up there's a definitely a um more and more people are becoming aware of themselves. And I feel like the work I'm doing, the work you're doing is where the way show is supporting people really just um, coming into themselves and seeing life from a new perspective. Mm. Yeah. Give me an example because being a coach myself yeah. and at first it was just with social dynamics and just with dating specifically, but then a lot of my clientele shifted to, uh, but also I have a broken relationship with my mom mm -hmm. also I have a broken relationship with myself. I'm mm -hmm. sure you deal with. Give me an example and give us an example of 
the type of guys that are coming to you, like walks of life and what kind of issues? Yeah, all the walks of life. Uh, um, a lot of people that are, have a lot of men that have been, you know, on a certain trajectory, on a certain path and are just coming to the realization that this isn't what lights them up and not really fully satisfied with the um, the way that they've set up in their day-to-day life and not really feeling that fulfillment um, mm-hmm. and asking the deeper questions. Um, and that's where, you know, I come in as a really powerful mirror to reflect back to them what they might not be seeing, how they might be creating a certain reality um, and then empowering them to make the choices of that higher self that we just spoke of so that they can start to live a life that is empowering, that's of service, that's um, really lights them up inside. Mm, right. Are these younger guys or are these older guys? All types of guys, man. Um, CMB, Conscious Man Brotherhood, which is a part of the collective say, from Man Cave. Yeah, um, we, each of us, 10 of us men, we we all embody different archetypes of the masculine. So there's, mm. it's really cool to see the different groups of people that are coming together and um, just the alchemy of men that are diving into this work and um, how they're all growing together, all at different points in their journey, in their evolution. And, um, you know, we all have medicine for each other. And just creating these containers, these men are able to give their medicine and receive the medicine of other men that are on a similar um a trajectory and spiritual path. That's an interesting thing you just brought up. We all have medicine for each other. Yeah. So in these archetypes uh, of your of your ten and the medicine you're dishing out, what's the type that you? Well, how would you describe yeah. your uh, your kind of medicine that you're yeah. with? I love this. Um, I would say I am a permission slip for other men to truly just express themselves, mm-hmm. like to really just um, embody an expression that is more aligned with their soul and to not really, you can either judge it or you can be um, inspired by it. So the medicine is like, hey, I'm going to show up the way I want to show up and that's an invitation for you to do the same in your life, to um, to just play and enjoy. Mm. And yeah, that's really, I think, a lot of the medicine that I bring into the CMB space and the medicine I get to give to you know the men that they might be 40, 50 that might need some of that yeah, that is in their life. So I've yeah. seen some of the videos on your gram, of or might have been even been CMB's gram, uh, of the group, the group dynamic and the group workshops, in which that there was some hectic footage of you guys putting on like an AFL uh, footy <laughs> tackle yeah. tackle yeah. bag or whatever it was, uh-huh. and just like slabbing into each other in yeah. these rooms. Could you, for those that haven't seen that, uh, also by the way, guys, all the links to where you can find. Uh, Glenn and connect with him and all the work that he's doing right now will be in the show links. But for those that have not seen what mm-hmm. I have seen, could you please paint this picture and describe yeah. what the hell is going on? Yeah. Yeah. So just to give a bit of context, this is one of the uh, the exercises that we have in our, our two-day workshop called Unleash the Beast, which is mm. um, a, a safe space for men to really tap into that primal part of themselves and um, to give it a space to express and let it out. Because um, if we're we, if we're kinking one emotion, say it's anger, mm. we're kinking all of them. So creating a container where we're deliberately throughout the whole weekend triggering, poking, prodding at these different things that are underneath the surface, and then allowing an outlet for that to come out. Mm. You go back to your regular life. You're like, wow, it doesn't feel so heavy. Mm. And I can, now I can interact with the world in a way where I'm not carrying around this like this part of myself that I refuse to look at. I can give, be a give, bit more give me an idea of what you might poke at and how that kind of manifests in one of these uh, students or clients. Have you referred to them as? Yeah, for sure. So, for an example, I won't use any names, but yeah, there yeah. might be a client that um, has all this built up anger within that he was never allowed to fully express. And um, he might have been bullied at school or he might have been bullied um, by his, his dad and growing up in a real strict environment. And for like 20, 30 years, this has just been sitting there under the surface. And then he he doesn't know why he's so frustrated all the time and why he keeps running, like getting annoyed by the little things. And um, when we dig a little bit deeper and we do this work, um, we we shine a light on it. And we're like, hey, like we show him the mirror of what's actually, he might think he's showing up a certain way, but then energetically in the room, everyone else is having a different experience of him. So having mm-hmm. a band of brothers and coaches and men that will lovingly call them forward and call them out in their own bullshit so that they can am i allowed to 
say that? Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that they can see themselves more objectively and then give them a space to really unleash and allow that um, denied part of themselves to be expressed um, mm. is medicine and is, is healing for them to go back into their own life and um, just be a transformed version of themselves in every part of every facet. What's the reaction like after that? Because I, I see the, the hectic, just like the, un, I see yep. the unleashing moment mm-hmm. of uh, people getting smashed by tackle bags yeah. and uh, enjoying I, it, by the way, guys, enjoying it. No, it's not like a torturous thing. Yeah. And what's that moment like afterwards? where they've got it all out how does it what does the person look like after that there's no um one one way to be with that afterwards yeah um some men might be like just really like just lit up like wow like i haven't allowed myself to feel the full spectrum of the human experience in so long because i've been suppressing Mm. this one part and there might be other men where like they're so charged and there's more there because uh, we've just opened Pandora's box mm. and there might be more work to, to mm. do. But at least now they're, they're like, wow, this this work on really addressing with the internal world um, goes so deep. And uh, as we start to shift and move things internally, then we start to see our external world start to shape differently. Yeah. Because it's getting its cues from the internal world. Absolutely. Yeah. There was something important you said there about not having fully expressed this human experience or getting into this human experience. Mm-hmm. I love that topic. And I think that's something where maybe even just shifting gears here for a second. How do you recommend for these guys when they go back into their everyday lives? Because people listening in right now maybe don't have access to mm-hmm. you and your, your brothers right now. Yeah. Uh, maybe they don't have any brothers at all. Maybe they don't have any fathers at all. Mm-hmm. And what would you say to someone who's like, okay, fuck yeah, I'm listening to this. This sounds good. Yeah. What can I do in my own life to start living or to start getting that full spectrum where I can release? Do you guys have things that you would recommend yeah. that way? I would just, firstly, I'd just start off inquiring. Just inquire. Like, how, how did I feel today? Like, how, when do we ever take a moment to just stop and like, man, like, I went through my day working and this came up and this came up. But how did I, out of 10, how did I feel overall? And developing that relationship with our emotions um, is one way to just gain awareness of what's really running us. Um, and two is um, hmm. finding people that can support you, like just reaching out, reaching out to people that can support you and um, being able to just share from a more authentic place because a lot, a lot of the times we have friends, but like do we have friends that we can really share the deep stuff that we're actually being with internally? Mm. and creating spaces like that for men where it's normal for men to actually talk about what's alive for them, what they're being with, so that they can process and... Um, Hold on, can I pause you there just one sec? Yeah. Because you said a word there, which I didn't quite... Did you say feeling alive or a lie? Feeling alive. Alive. Yeah. It almost sounded like a lie, and that's why I wanted to just pause you there for a second because both are extremely interesting. Yeah. Guys that haven't been able to feel or express that and feel like they're truly alive, mm-hmm. or also guys that are feeling like they're living a lie. Mm. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like both of those are incredibly interesting to what you were talking about there about mm-hmm. having support groups. Yep. And the friends you were talking about having those, but I refer to as the brothers on the wall. Yep. You know, the people you would have with you. Drinking buddies. That too. Yep. That too, drinking buddies. I was mm-hmm. thinking more of like life and death situations. Oh, those ones. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I misread that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you're talking, you're thinking of the construction yeah. workers. You know? yeah. <laughs> I was being like on the eve of the invading hordes. Yeah. And you have like the brother on the left and the brother on the right. And these, these are the guys I want to take down mm-hmm. to defend the, the village of me. Yep. Uh, I think when people have asked me before about cultivating friendships, like what do you want to put your time and your energy in? And I'd like to get your uh, perspective on this. It sounds like you're already kind of taking us there. But to have, like, what feels more right towards you? To have 50, 60 interactions or loose relationships with people where you can yeah, go out for a drink with, mm-hmm. but do you really want them defending the village with you? No. Versus two or three yep. that you would trust your absolute life with. Mm. Yeah, no, definitely having um, quantity, not qu- no, quality, not quantity. Mm. So having those those relationships that, are really deep that you can show up in all aspects of your humanness and they'll still love you no matter what mm. Cultiv- cultivating those relationships is really um what i'm after and mm. uh not not so much about having how many friends but like what are who are the friends that are going to stand with me in the mud yep when shit hits the fan absolutely yeah 
and this is a key point because I want to dive into you a little bit as well because I want to not take for granted or not assume that everyone knows your whole entire story in life as well. Mm-hmm. We're constantly going to back uh, go back and forward here between the work you do and who you are mm-hmm. and because I think they're both extremely interesting, which is what drew me to you in the beginning. Right? Actually, I think I, I, I sent you a message on Insta when I was living in Canada, mm. um, just like recognizing the work that you're doing in the world. and Yeah, that's how we met, right? Yeah. 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 You had seen like one of my videos or something and you just hit me yeah. up on the gram or something or... And realized that you're from Adelaide. I'm like, I'm going to hang out with this dude when I get back for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And for those that are looking for more of that backstory, if you just hit up the Bodoja podcast, episode 88, you can... We went really deep into uh, Glenn's kind of younger journey there. So, but I still want to get a couple of things and what I was going to ask you, number one, just uh, for relevance here, context, how old are you? I'm 28, just turned last month. I just turned 28. Yeah. So we're roughly the same age. Uh-huh. I'm almost 27. Yeah. And and so when you when you think about that age number for a man, for a cuz if you think about our life expectancy. Actually, let me maybe not even let me not even uh, load this. How how long do you expect to live like let's not get into the mm-hmm. the spiritual yet. Mm-hmm. All right, let's not get into that yet. We will get there. Trust me guys, we will get there. Mm-hmm. But if you just think about Think about the number that comes to mind. How, how old do you think you would reasonably expect to live to? I don't think, honestly, the way I want to answer this is I don't have like a number in my head, but I know that as long as I'm here, there's purpose. There's reason for me being here. Mm. And there's re- like, and normally it's serving the whole. So as long as I have a purpose and a, a heartbeat, then... You could go tomorrow? Yeah, I, yeah for sure. No, like we, None of us know when that time comes, but... Um, like I'm, I'm doing a, a really like I've really been diving into just like taking care of this human vessel mm. while I'm while I'm alive, so I can live a long and healthy life. And so be, yeah. Glenn's going too deep for us too soon, because I totally get what <laughs> yeah. you get. Because I, I was uh-huh. trying to stop you from going there, uh-huh. just because this is not the point of what I wanted to get on. Uh, but I, we're going to get back to this because mm-hmm. I my face absolutely lit up when he said I'm good to go tomorrow. Mm-hmm. That is one of the things that in my group sessions with guys, it's an exercise and a, uh, a thing I'll go through with guys in which that I'll ask them all, when are you happy to die? And we'll go through the room and you get a vast array. You know, I want to have this much money. I want to have had this many uh, successes in this particular field when I've done this and that, with the family and the kids, you know, et cetera. And oftentimes it's maybe one. I might see one guy who'll say, I'm good now. And it's that one guy right there that yeah. I just, I want to, because I had to reach that point myself. Yeah. And it sounds like you, and you were organically yeah. came like, out there. It's like, it's not that I want to go tomorrow. Yeah. But I'm, but you're good. I'm really happy with the, the work I'm doing right now where it's like, I, I'm leaving it out in the field. I'm, I'm inquiring about my mission and like service and what I'm really here to do and be. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll get back to this. Yeah. But all I was going to do is like, like a rough a rough estimate, your physical vessel, human vessel, it's my life. 150. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the way Glenn treats himself. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All we have to do is head up the Instagram and you'll, you'll yeah. agree. And uh, his, his Instagram. And so let's say he's 28 now. Mm-hmm. And what? It's like you got another 130, maybe 120. Yep. Yeah. Is that, is that good maths or is that terrible 132 math? Yeah. to get to 150. To be specific. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at roughly around the 130-ish if everything all goes to plan. That's a long fucking time. I know. It's yeah. a long time. I mean, it's a very short time in the sense that I'm sure you can agree. Mm-hmm. As you start to live that mission, as you start to do what you feel like you're here to do, mm-hmm. time goes like that, yeah? Yeah. More so. Like as we continue to evolve, like what is time, man? Yeah. I don't want to go too deep as well, but like, what is it? Like, oh, we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll get there. Uh-huh. Uh, I said this to um, Tam, who was a couple podcasts back up in Canada. Uh, I said, if we go too deep too quickly, we lose a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So we'll get there. Mm-hmm. We'll get there. <laughs> but anyways, the reason why I brought this whole age thing up, my friends, is because Glenn is still in the beginning quarter of the beginning quarter. Right? In, the, in his potential reasonably that he could be doing in this life. And you see how hard he's going at it. Still go, going hard at it as if it was going to end tomorrow. And I feel like that that spirit, that quality is so important because you can fall into that lackadaisical of like, yeah, tomorrow's Tuesday. Hey, tomorrow's Saturday. Ah, oh, 
drinks with the boys. Yep. Right. Saturday. Ah, and then back to fucking work Monday. Yeah. But it really seems like you haven't got that perspective. Yeah. I think just surrounding myself with other people that are on a similar trajectory and a, a similar mission, just like wanting, wanting to, um, you know, really make some positive dent in humanity. Um, mm. Is that if I'm surrounded by people that are doing that, then I'm going to become just like that as well. So finding the mentors and people in my life that really um, inspired me and embodied certain traits and qualities uh, has really lit a fire in me to not just settle for just a regular existence and to really make positive change in the time that we do have in this realm. Mm. Yeah. So key word there, mentors. Yeah. Talk to me about mentors, the concept in general, but also specifically for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Feel free to mention names if you want. If you don't want, that's that's cool as well. But who have been, and it doesn't necessarily have to be business or financial in your CMB Mm -hmm. or whatnot. It could also be, you know, mentors extend throughout all of life, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, talk to me about the mentors you've had in your life. For sure. Um, And also just pull that sucker just a little closer around to, yeah, there you go. go. Awesome. Yeah, mentors for me are people that embody certain qualities and characteristics that I'm like, I don't know what it is that they're on, but I want to learn from them so that I can show up more powerfully in my life. So um, like hiring coaches and mentors, Preston Smiles was my first one. And Mm -hmm. a lot of the work I do in CMB is headed by him. Um, Adam Roa, another, he's a a different flavor, a different type of mentor, uh, really helped me um, tap into my creativity and my poetry and um, that creative aspect that is just, you can't predict, but allowing that to flow through. Mm. Um, So yeah, different mentors all over, like Christian Guzman, who's like, I've never met the person, uh, but he's a mentor for me in health and fitness. Like I used to watch his YouTube videos and learn so much about how he was creating a physique. And um, Thomas DeLauro, like a mentor I looked up to in health that has so much knowledge on the the human body and the immune system um yeah there's just there's so many powerful mentors that have helped shape who i am today and the choices i make and how i sh- show up in the world it's okay yeah it's okay because of course you could go throughout this life not uh seeking out mentors mm-hmm. and it's not to say that you'd be wrong to not do that but why not if there's a shorter path or if there's a path that's more efficient yeah and the more efficient path is going to be shorter. Right? Instead of taking 20 years to learn this this lesson, this mistake, why not get the influence from someone who's already done those 20 years yep. and let you know? Yep. And I think there's often a little bit of a pushback on mentorship in the sense that some people use it as a crutch. Right? They use their mentors to they become dependent upon them. Mm-hmm. And so that almost it feels like they don't have to take the risk. They don't have to take the the execution and it's not all going to be resting on them is have, did did you ever have an affliction with yeah. that or has that ever been a part of your psyche yeah, as for well? sure like a lot i guess for a lot of people myself included and i'll speak from me having mentors and putting them on a pedestal has been a part of my journey like really looking up to them and um thinking that they're separate from me or that they're mm. above me mm. um and then having them call me up like no like you're the same as me. If I'm doing it, then I'm just, and you're seeing it, then I'm a reflection of what's possible. So taking them off that pedestal and realizing they're human, they still shit. They still have to go home at night and sleep. Like they they go through the same emotions that I go through and yet they are achieving results in, my, in their life that I, I'm aspiring to. Hmm. Yeah. It's a good realization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's powerful because uh, coming from the space that I came from, uh, I see that quite a bit even just with guys that I bump into out on the street or with clients that come down for boot camp. And often they, they will say like, you know, I, I want to be like you. I want to, some of them, I want to be you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you don't. Because one, it's not possible. So you're always going to be chasing the rabbit outside yourself yeah. and you'll never catch that illusion. Mm-hmm. But also it detracts from the power that you have inside you. Mm-hmm. So like, why would you ever want to be someone else? So you are mathematically almost impossible. It's almost impossible that you are currently here in the same with yeah. you right here. Yep. The things that had to go right, all of your ancestors having to be successful mm. through every generation leading back to 13.8 billion years ago, if you just want to take science at first word mm-hmm. without getting into something even more spiritual. But but for everything that had to go right, for you to be existing here and now, mm. we talk, I talk about suicide a lot in my content. Mm-hmm. 
we talked about suicide last, suicide last yep. time. In fact, I actually had a bit you of a had tear. A moment. Yeah. 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 It was, a, it was a, a tear of beautiful, a beautiful tear and joy reminiscing on Matt. And for those that don't know, he's one of my best mates who committed suicide about four years ago after a long battle of schizophrenia. And, and so I feel like it's really important for me to pass on the lessons uh, that I learned from that. And, and, and like, I'm not really going to judge his decision. That's his decision. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. And you have to be okay with that. You can't yeah. be angry with that. Nothing's going to change it. Yeah. Right. But, but even so, for the time that he spent, every single person that's ever walked by me uh, that I've ever interacted with has received a piece of him. Mm. And so, even if he was only here for 23 or 24 years or whatever it was, that means something. And then for those of you that are listening in, I'm sure Glenn can speak to this, like to your worth. Your worth is not just the dollars in your bank account. No. Right? What about the way you interact with people? Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah, I have an interesting conversation when it comes to worth and mm. where I've landed on it right now is like our worth is how, sorry? Like personally between you? Yeah, just no, just an com- internal conversation yeah, because yeah. it used to be um, my worth was how how good can I make my physique or um, even to the effect of um, traveling so much like my worth is how many destinations can I go to how many crazy amazing experiences can I have that can be applauded by my environment um, but worth for me really is about how much presence I can bring to each and every moment mm-hmm. that's where the magic is there's only this one eternal moment and just really valuing that valuing this interaction and being fully in it um, that's where I find worth and value Can I just, you don't know, you don't know how good this is. <laughs> you don't know how good this is uh, for what Glenn just brought up here. I highly doubt Glenn is researching and scanning my Instagram uh, in preparation and every single post gone by. <laughs> so there's no way that, and if you were here with me, you would have seen the spirit in his eyes that everything was truth mm-hmm. coming out just then. I just want to read you this this post, okay? Ah. Mm-hmm. Uh, just. And for listeners at home, I yeah definitely wasn't doing my research and um, scanning through your Instagram just so I was tapped in. I did listen to your to your most recent podcast on the BD Bodo Jipoto. Bodo Jipoto podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but not been on the gram. All right, so where is this? If this is going to derail me too much, I'm just going to have to get it from memory. But I know I damned it to a girl recently because she asked me for the post. Mm-hmm. So it's it's got to be here somewhere. It won't be that much longer. It's on the concept of presence being your worth. She changed her bloody profile picture. <laughs> Give me. <laughs> ah, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. We're on now. Okay. Yes. There we go. So I just want to read you this. I just want to see what you think about this. Well, this is the photo. Here, just look at this photo. Mm-hmm. So that's the visual. Yeah. It's just a photo of me doing a peace sign in some lovely garden edge. Kind of like this. Yeah, kind of like that, actually. <laughs> so this is it. It reads, I sat down for a chat with the universe and asked, where did all this begin? The universe smiled back at me and whispered, you are the beginning. A follower on YouTube recently asked me, what is value measured by? In reference to human beings. His belief was that a man's value is determined by, in quotes, financial success and assets. In quotes. Quite adamant about it. I believe our value is measured by our presence. When we are present, we are able to render the greatest service to another, and that is in acknowledging who they are. You can have all the money in the world, but if no one's there to acknowledge you, what's it worth? It's powerful, man. And the alignment is what I'm I'm getting at. Yeah, I'm getting it as well. It's uh, It's like we're we're so aligned in Mm -hmm. in that, but we haven't discussed this before. We haven't, and... It's Since amazing. we last spoke like 18 months ago, we maybe check in like every few months, see yeah. how each other doing, like give, show, show some love. But yeah, we haven't had, had had this discussion, but it's it's cool to see how the alignment remains. We've come yeah. to the same point. It's yeah. like we've, we've taken different paths mm-hmm. and uh, not that dissimilar paths, but of course we're all on our own journey. Yeah. But it's not like we're holding each other's hands on this journey. And for us to come to, that was just a really cool moment. What I, what I heard you call it, I was like, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So communicating that to uh, other people is hugely important. And I kind of want to 
just kind of segue, shift gear a little bit here uh, to a different angle of the temple. When we're coming to starting off mentors, and you mentioned physical a lot, mm-hmm. and you've been doing some crazy water fasting. Yeah, you've dropped a couple, uh, a couple, a couple of little tidbits. <laughs> but let's get into it for real now. Do you want to talk to me about this? Yeah, this whole journey through water uh-huh. fasting you've been with, as we have some water on the table here. for sure. Um, so yeah, I've been water fasting for going on six years now. Um, when I first got introduced to it, it was introduced as a way of losing body fat really quickly, which mm. it is that. And um, being so committed to the practice, um, I stumbled across the some of the the spiritual and metaphysical mm. benefits of water fasting as well. And the way I explain it to people that haven't really been exposed to water fasting or um, delved into it very deeply is there is an innate intelligence in our body, call it God, call it source, call it spirit, call it infinite energy. Um, and uh, that that um, force is always working to our benefit. And when we go through the process of um, processing all the food that's in our stomach, in our gut, and there's nothing less left to process, that force is able to work differently within our body. And we're able to um, begin to heal some of the our organs and... Um, when we're not suppressing, when we're not consuming so much food, a lot of emotional stuff comes up as well. And we're able to see it objectively and allow that to process as well. Um, similar to what we do in a workshop environment, I'm applying to water fasting hmm. and really supporting people in um, releasing emotions and really attuning their physical vessel, um, like a radio tuner, into hmm. um, higher don't mean to get too woo-woo, but higher frequencies so that they can um, receive the messages from their higher self and um, really start to embody that in this lifetime, in this now moment. Mm. Yeah. Well, even that concept of, there's so much you've said that we've got to get into, but even just right now when you're talking about frequency, you can, there are a lot of people that will take that take that a little too far. And mm. yeah, that's where the term woo-woo comes from. Yeah. But even in my own social dynamics work as a coach there, the term frequency, it's like we all have, we're all energetic beings and we're all operating, we just use the word frequency. That's the vo- That's the sound that comes out of our mouth. Yeah. But if you talk about what that actually is, it's what that feeling is, mm-hmm. right? Are you, and you, we just have to use words to relate. That's the word we've chosen here. You could very well use uh, a different word. You could use tension. You mm-hmm. use what tension, you are, you, you're loose, you're tired, you, yep. whatever, right? What are you operating on? And when a man interacts with a woman, when a masculine energy and a feminine energy interact, I often I say, I get an example of uh, a really shy, nervous girl. Right? She's really timid. She's not quite comfortable with you yet. And guys will ask me, well, am I supposed to continue being me and being, you know, just, just keep being, if say he's really high energy or say he's really expressive. And because I don't want to have to, you know, fake who I am. Mm-hmm. Because that's not that doesn't feel right, right? There's a bit of a disconnection there. But what I say is that if she's operating on frequency 91.9 and you're on a 201.7, to show empathy and care and be able to read the person in front of you, drop down to meet her, right? Just so you can build trust and let her know that, hey, I see you. I see that I, I don't need to be uh, Mr. Sherman in front of you right now. And then when she gets comfortable, you can bring her up with you. And all the reason why I wanted to do bring that up was that frequency. That because he had to cover with woo woo there, but frequency is not necessarily just woo woo. There's real shit behind yep, it. Yeah, no, for and, sure. And especially when when we're talking, I totally understand what you're saying. But maybe for some people not used to hearing that term, just think about frequency as being how we describe we're energy in a space vibrating. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So putting that to the side, getting back to your water fasting now. Uh, give me some tactics. How do you like to go about the water fasting? I'm sure it's changed over your journey. Yeah. I'm sure you do. You know. Yeah, fishtail with it. it. Yeah, yeah. But think about the absolute beginner right now who's never done a water fast. Mm. Um, tactics one: don't eat food. We'll just start. <laughs> just start. So I, I typically just start in the evening, seven eight p.m. Okay. Um, before I go to bed because when you wake up, it's like I've already, you've already been fasting, so you're already getting a head start in that process. Um, and two: getting accountability, getting someone to support you. Like, hey, I'm doing this. And I would love it if you could just check in with me how I'm doing around lunchtime, dinner time, around those, um, you know, those key areas where we might um, not be in integrity with what we've set out to do. Um, and probably one of the most important things before doing a water fast is getting really clear on the intention, hmm. getting really clear on why you're doing it. Because unless you have that, 
then how are you going to be able to pull through some of those uh, challenging moments, some of those moments where it, it, you're testing your fortitude and your um, ability to uh, be your word, even when it doesn't, even when you don't feel like sticking to it. Mm. How how long do you recommend for an absolute beginner to get started? Once again, it, it depends on the intention. Um, but if you just want to, like, literally just dip your toe in the dip your toe in the water, yeah. um, just try sixteen hours. Just try not eating breakfast one day, yeah, and um, build up to it and get clear on why it is that you want to do it. Because a, lo- a lot of the clients that I've had come through that have se- seeked my support and counsel around water fasting, it's for a number of different reasons. It could mm. be to lose like body fat. It could be because they are lacking clarity in their life and they want to clear the channel, clear the vessel. How does the methodology differ between those two? So say you have got person A, looking to get shredded mm-hmm. versus for stereos, when it was still around. You used to say that. Yeah. It has no around it, you know, The term yeah. shredded and stereos always came together. Uh-huh. Uh, shred, shredded for stereos. For those that don't live in Adelaide, South Australia, it's like a festival that used to be down down mm-hmm. here. Anyways, you got a guy who's getting shredded for stereos, wants to drop body fat. What's the methodology for him versus to what you're saying there of someone who's like, actually, I want to discover a bit more yeah. about the darkness within. For sure. So it's one, it's starting with intention. And two, uh, when it's a little bit deeper than sort of just wanting to lose body fat, there's a number of different um, self-inquiry inquiry processes that you can do during a water fast that are that much more potent because we don't have uh, a food blocking any of the... Um, the emotions that are wanting to come up and be seen and heard and felt. Mm-hmm. So um, really getting clear on that. And then um, if it is, if it is a, for a spiritual reason, it's then doing the work and going deep and sitting in the silence mm. and allowing so it a to bit be. bit of meditation going on with it. Yeah. 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 For sure. And for those that are listening on the podcast right now, you should probably go to the YouTube version. Jin, uh, Jin, Glynn is a a very uh, well proportioned man. Uh, it is uh, puts a bit of time in on the gym, mm-hmm. a decent amount of muscle mass on you. So, how do you go about with the muscle lot? Do you experience a lot of muscle loss when you're doing your water fasting? Yeah. So for from up to about um, seventy hours in water, you won't lose any muscle. Like your body will um, tap into energy stores within the body fat that you already have in your body. And it won't start the process process of breaking down muscle until about the seventy hour mark. So, mm-hmm. um, unless you're going for like a spiritual reason, there's really no reason to go go over water fasting seventy hours. Right. Yeah, because you want to keep it functional. You still want to train. And, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the especially the tactics that's what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. The kind of numbers we're looking at. Because uh, I've been doing fasting since I was about eighteen. Mm-hmm. So, so eight years or so yeah about eight years or so and i'll constantly fluctuate between like almost like 20 go 24 hours no food and then just get get a meal in for an hour and then another cycle 24 yeah. 24 and 1 24 and 1 and then 16 and 8s and 17 and mm-hmm. sevens and constantly playing with it i've never done a prolonged though yeah like a three day or i've seen you know hearing about people doing like weeks yeah you know that's like shit. 20 days or yeah so yeah. i'm not so inclined to do that uh but Maybe you a, could definitely push a, yourself, maybe man. Maybe a three day. I think it would serve you well, like just knowing the the path that you're on and the, the inquiry work that you already like to do. Doing a, a two day, three day water fast would. Um, I would love to hear some of the realizations and downloads that you get during that period of abstaining from food. Done. Yeah. Done. We're doing it. Yeah. As yeah, so we're doing an eternal energy channel challenge here, where we'll uh, we'll, we'll organize it, and we'll see uh, how many people can get on with it as well. Ah, uh, done for sure. Yeah. And uh, I knew coming into this conversation, this we we're going to get to this. I was excited about it because I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure Glid's going to get me to do a water fast. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll here. keep you accountable to it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I'll check in with you on that. Mm-hmm. So, along, since we're on that topic now, since we're on the topic of physical health, what are the other things that you do? And mm-hmm. all you have to do is just take a take a quick look, if again, the room of you, or just take a quick look at your Instagram and know that you're in tip top shape. Yeah. Right. Uh, Sprite, you know, sprite chicken. Yeah. Uh, what are the other things that you do to keep For yourself? Sure. And you know, full transparency. Um, when I got back from my travels earlier this year and everything went into lockdown, mm. um, my health wasn't in the peakest of conditions. And I had been dealing with um, just some 
chronic sort of inflammatory issues. Yeah. Um, like dandruff for one. Yeah, right. Uh, dry skin and just like a constant cold. So it, um, it had me go a little bit deeper into, okay, so I'm creating this as my experience. How am I creating this? Mm. So two things that I've really been focusing on lately is one, sleep and recovery. Because mm. it doesn't matter how much you work out or how much you lift. If you're not recovering properly, then... Um, you're not really getting the benefits of um, working out and training. Mm. And two, I've been jumping on the celery juice train and juicing every day for the last 25 days. And I've seen such a huge shift in um, just my respiratory conditions in my, my dandruff is non-existent anymore. And yeah. Um, yeah, just staying committed to a practice and committing to doing it every single day and allowing the result to be what it is and diving in fully. And it sounds like you're very open to experimentation. Mm -hmm. Like you're not so dogmatic about one thing or locked no. into one thing. If you found out, actually, maybe this is not the best way through your own experimentation that you would try something else. Does that sound about right? Or yeah, I always keep an open mind. Like it, it, yeah. like the water fasting serves me until it doesn't. Hmm. And that, then it's like, all right, I might need a different type of medicine, i.e. celery juice in the mornings. Or I need, might need to look at the way I'm recovering because I'm not, getting any stronger maybe i can dive into the quality of sleep i'm getting which that's why i've got this ring on which the aura ring oh, okay tracks my sleep now i've heard about these things yeah, yeah right. i'm like just getting more metrics on being able to measure um the way i'm really taking care of myself i just thought it was a fashion piece no nah, this is a uh, like measuring my heart rate yeah cool um all types of my temperature all types of things that's dope yeah yeah all right so I mean, the, the, your physical temple or your physical vessel, as you refer to, is it's so key mm -hmm. because, I mean, this is one way I've heard, now is probably the time we're going to get into that deeper shit now. This is one way I've heard our experience, you could call, in this life being described. And it's uh, the way Joe Rogan describes it, which is that, and this is not quoting him word for word, but the gist is that I've heard him say that our bodies are like these physical mechanical houses mm. and that our consciousness housed within it and that it's like attuned to a certain frequency and yeah. it's like a TV in a sense and that when the TV breaks and parts can break on the TV, like sometimes TVs come faulty. You know, I'm sure you've had a lot of experience in yep. your own personal life with uh, dealing with people with disabilities and that type of thing. But the signal coming in to that mechanical, mm -hmm. into that physical house uh, whether you want to call it God, love, source, one, yeah, all right, whatever you want to call it, uh, is uh, is whole, yeah, all right. But if the if we can make that TV, if we can make that mechanical house, that vehicle as best it can, yeah, why not, right? One hundred percent, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Like our, our body is the the spiritual housing for that deeper part of us, that that consciousness that is interacting with this 3D reality. Mm. So if we're taking care of that, then it's it's like um, how, like the work that we can do in the world when we're firstly taking care of this is um, the impact that we can have is that much greater. And this is a good line to go on because it's something that you said before that I wanted to tie back to, which was you said you're meaning for work at some point. You said, I want to make sure that I have a difference in this world, mm -hmm. make a positive dent in this world. Yeah. So I wanted to actually ask you, but you, you're on such a run. A good time we're here now, mm -hmm. which is what does that look like? Whether that is at 70 or 150, mm -hmm. what does you being satisfied or your meaningful work look like mm. by the time your time's done? Yeah, there's, you know, there's there's many things like- um, Yeah, we got time. The work that I'm doing in the world, whether it's the men's work or whether it's supporting people with their health, um, the thing that is constant throughout and that I keep coming back to is- um, it doesn't really matter the work that I choose. It's as long, how much love and compassion am I putting in and um, bringing to that work mm. and bringing to that space. And I feel like that really is the, the fingerprint that I want to have um, my life be for everyone that I'm fortunate enough to interact with and serve. And let's get on your story here for a second because I don't think I've even asked you this on the, the last podcast we did. Mm -hmm. But because this is the way that you're here with me now this is a evolution of, of a kind, yep. right? Actually, not even just of a kind. This is an evolution in which that two years ago, you weren't nearly as sure-footed and confident in terms of like, it was only really just the beginning. Yeah. And not to say that you hadn't been doing work before that, mm -hmm. but in terms of you 
stepping out into what you really wanted to be doing. But this time around, it's like you, it's like lays it in. Yeah, it's very yeah. concrete. And I've been seeing that in the work that you've been doing. So I'm thinking about the person listening to this. Can you just paint what type of mindset you were previously coming from? Because someone listening to this right now might just go, oh, he's always been this way. Yeah. You're not always been no, this way. for sure. Like I was a product of my environment, a product of the friends I surrounded myself with, mm. uh, which um, ultimately some of the choices I was making when I was in those running in those circles was uh, kind of betraying what my true self wanted me to do in a sense. And being able to use your discernment, which is a really powerful tool to develop, discern, you know, does this serve me or does this not dis- serve me, mm. um, has really helped me to start making choices that are in alignment with my path that uh, would serve the greater good, would serve the greater whole and not be so self-centered about me, but how, how can I impact those around me? Because ultimately there's only one of us here. So how can we serve everyone that's in humanity right now? And um, dating back to what we were talking about before, um, the amount of presence that we can bring to each and every moment, like how can I serve in this moment? Mm with who's in front of me. The most sacred thing is what is. There's nothing else. Mm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. There's a, uh, there's a meditation or a, a common theme, a pattern in my meditations every night, which is it comes out in so many different ways. The manifestation comes out in so many different ways. I use so many different analogies for it. And I put them up on my... um. Instagram story and the highlights of people to, to play with themselves. And if you've just been watching long enough, one of them has always been this concept of turning off so that you can see what's already on. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going to throw this at you. It's like, listen to the sound of the present moment. A song's already playing. No need to interrupt. When you turn off like your your chatter, mm-hmm. your incessant, unrequired noise, mm-hmm. a song's already playing. Mm-hmm. And it's called the present moment, and I love I love uh, where you went with that because it stemmed off me asking you about your meaningful work, mm-hmm. right? And then we it comes back, came back to G turning G off, and you would think that your most meaningful work would require G mm-hmm. would require you, but I mean you've been in enough rooms with guys that you've been helping. Of course, now in COVID, you got, we have to do it virtually, but when I'm sure we'll get back to yeah. getting in rooms with people, but describe what it's like when you actually see someone have a reali- realization mm. or, or a change. How does that make it's, you feel? Yeah, man? it's so fulfilling. Um, and a lot of the work is just getting out of our own way so we can allow whatever it is to come through us and speak through us. Mm. Uh, but, you know, really being the mirror for people to see themselves more objectively and more clearly is is huge because once we've shifted one tiny perspective how does that impact how they show up in the rest of their life and go out and to their families to the to their communities it's huge mm. yeah how does your family uh respond to all of this you know it's uh yeah i think they're really proud of me um it's like a, i'm I wouldn't say I'm like the normal 28 year old, but they're like unconditionally loving in the choices I make and how I choose to be and show up. Mm. Um, But yeah, like it's definitely not the standard sort of son, I would say. Yeah. That's uh, that's, that's a rare gift then. That's beautiful. What would you say to someone maybe who doesn't have that support? Because I'm sure you deal with people that, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the people you deal with have family have had family members be the complete opposite Mm -hmm. in which that they're trying to bury them. They're trying to make sure that that seed doesn't penetrate through to the sky. What would you say to someone maybe in that situation? Yeah. The thing that you're wanting them to give to you is the thing that you most need to give to yourself. That validation, that love, that gets to come from within. That permission slip you mentioned before. Yeah. Yeah. And then when 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 you actually gift yourself that love and that acknowledgement, that is when the relationship's around outside of you will shift to reflect back the amount of self-love that you have already cultivated so you know family members especially are some of the most powerful mirrors in our lives to see ourselves so if they're reflecting back to us um this this lack of self-love then 
it's like, all right, so now I get to do the work internally to shift what is showing coming up externally. Mm. What would you say has been, moving on from this line, what would you say has been, you probably had multiple. So let me phrase this question correctly. If not one, maybe two or three, if it's more, definitely share more. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking about the evolutionary shifts that you've seen within yourself since, uh, I say, leaving high school. Right, since about what, 17, 18 or so, when you yep. really kind of, I take that fr- time frame because that's kind of when you're unleashed into the rest of the world. What if you could fragment those, if you could mm-hmm. compartment, sorry, not fragment, compartmentalize those into chunks or sagas or yep. take it however you want to take it, sure. basically to about those shifts within yourself. Where you yep. know, okay, that's a huge. I think the first huge shift came when I started traveling the world yep. by myself. So, um, I had only ever known myself as Lynn in Adelaide in this environment. And when I started going out, exploring the world and not having any reference, people meeting me, not having any reference point to who I am on Instagram or who I am back home and just meeting me for who I am in that moment. I'm like, I'm not like the person I think I was, isn't all that I am. Mm. I'm so much more like these people are experiencing Lynn, but are reflecting something different back to me. So just changing up the environment was, um, was huge in my, own growth and evolution and really just surrounding myself with people that uh would call me forward would Mm. see like would see that higher version of me and hold me to that standard and let me know when mentors yeah the the mentors and stuff that would say hey this is who you said you're committed to being and right now you're showing up like this Mm. what do you want to do about it no judgment but this is to, to let you know that you're repeating patterns Hmm. so having that accountability has been huge into really just stepping up and um beginning to embody more and more of my soul's essence in in this reality and you know it's forever unfolding like a lotus flower like Hmm. rising from the mind it's one of my favorite uh there's a there's a quote from a um tick tick nut tut i think if i'm probably absolutely butchering that that. No, it's a Vietnamese uh, Zen master. And uh, Tick, I think T H I C T. My Vietnamese is terrible. Mm-hmm. I com- probably completely butchered that. I apologize to my Vietnamese brothers and sisters. Not that I am Vietnamese, but yeah. kind of, I'm half Asian, so I'll take some of that pie. But he, um, he has a quote describing it's one of the most beautiful ways of describing the, the lotus flower, as you mentioned there, which is you know, a lotus flower can only rise from the mud. If you mm-hmm. ever go down to the Adelaide Botanic Gardens during winter, it looks like an absolute wasteland right now. You know, with the massive, yep. with the massive trees and the massive lily pond. Where, where you took us on our first date. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you come back in summer, it's the most beautiful thing in the world, mm-hmm. and the most beautiful thing, thing in the world had to come from, you know, something that was on death's door. It looks like it's on death's door. It looks like there's nothing. Nothing could grow out of this. Yeah. Swampland, just dark uh-huh. mud. But then the most beautiful flowers come from it. And that's a, that's a that's a theme. Like everything you were just talking about right there, people calling you. I was going to say out, but that's just how we how we phrase it. But how you phrase it, calling forward, yeah, which is probably a good difference. Actually, maybe yeah. you want to speak on that. Is there's a big difference between people calling you out, yeah, and calling you forward. Calling you forwards from love, calling you out is, in my experience, some sort of projection as well. Like a projection of like, I'm calling you out because what you're doing is annoying me and affecting my reality. It's like. But calling you forward is like, hey, I see, I see you, I love you, and you can be better. Hmm. So it's come from a place of empathy, yeah. yeah, yeah, rather than from a place of judgment. Mm-hmm. And that's why that's why it is super important to have those mentors and people in your life that love you enough to tell you and show you the things that you aren't willing to look at. Hmm. And if you don't have those, find them. Yeah, and yeah. you know, seek and you shall find. Like, like as soon as you're like, man, it would be really cool. If I had someone powerful in my life that could, you know, be that for me, you know, it, it'll show up. So yeah. if you're looking for it, mm-hmm. you're going to find it. Yeah. Or you'll die trying. Yep. <laughs> That's kind of how I describe success. Just have to put in some 50 cent. Have to 100%. Because <laughs> I, uh, that's how I describe success. Mm-hmm. Or in anything that I do is, uh, listen, I'm going to succeed or I'm going to die trying. Yeah. Like, that's the mentality is that I don't, the, the, the hand stamped. Or well, this hand stamping my hand is it's my own. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking for you to stamp my hand because no. you never could. No. Right? Anything you tried to stamp my hand with, it would rub off in a day. 
But when you stamp your own hand, you know, it's a branding for life. Yeah. So that was uh, that was key. I'm always trying to think about the guys that and girls that are listening to this podcast and what they can tactically take from it. You talk about these support groups. What's a good place? Uh, you can. I'm sure you, you probably know a few of them since yep. you, you're in them. But mm-hmm. you know, where should someone start in terms of? Hey, I'm okay. I feel you guys. I'm trying to find. It's probably the people around me are probably not the most supportive. Yeah. Um, what's a good place? I would to start? start by thinking about who already is in your network of friends or just people that you are showing up in your space, whether it's online or in person, that inspire you. And starting to cultivate a relationship with that person. Like, hey, you know, I just want to reach out because um, I see what you're doing and it, it really inspires me in this way. And I just wanted to acknowledge you. Like, just coming from a real genuine place and building those relationships uh, will open up so many doors to mm. and more possibilities. But it takes getting over your own ego that's like, oh, that's silly to reach out. It takes getting over all those stories that would have us not reach out to someone uh, to really just um, start that interaction and start developing, cultivating those relationships that are going to call us forward and are, are in alignment with the person that we know we can be. Mm. Yeah. And there's a guy in your circle that we both know that I feel like you have a particular intimate relationship with in this sense. Yep. Shout out to Mikkel. Shout out to Mickey. Mickey. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, so for those, uh, you have to go back to, we talk about um, Mikkel in the last podcast a little bit. So, but just to give a little bit of context, the reason why I want to bring up Mikkel here is because we're on this line. Mm -hmm. I met Mikkel through you and Mikkel was of a very similar light. Yeah. So I think we all kind of vibrate in a very similar way. And I'm interested in, because we're talking about support groups, talking about brothers and sisters that are going to be there to call you forward. Was he the first one of your friendship group that you were yeah, he felt was, like you could open up towards? Yeah, he was probably, as I was going through this own personal evolution, um, he was one of the friends that I could really confide in mm. and could really he could really hold the space and I could tell him what I was experiencing and um, like, likewise. And it's cool, like he he's doing his in his own lane, doing his own thing in Bali at the moment. But still, we're we're doing similar work in the world. Um, but it's cool, someone that's come from a similar environment, similar friendship circle, really branch out and create something different for himself mm. has been, um, yeah, really amazing to watch his journey unfold as as mine has unfolded as well. Just running alongside each other, but different. Yeah. 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 Hey, that's and we were talking just before the podcast started that, you know, you might not see someone uh, every single day, or you might not see someone for years, but if it's the right relationship, mm-hmm. like we haven't seen each other, oh, it's a year. eighteen months, I reckon, Christmas yeah. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It I must mean, be yeah. actually. Maybe we we got a, I think we might got a meal like a week after that or something mm-hmm. like that. Or whatever. Maybe it was before that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it was, but but we're back here in this room, and it's like you don't miss a beat, no. and you feel like this with all these types of people. Yeah. Doesn't matter how yeah. how much time or how much space has elapsed uh, between you, and seeking those relationships. Uh, shout out to my boy Roy. Uh, he's the same. Hartley. He's the. Uh, he's exactly the same. I'm on the same for four years, five years in time, like long stretches. But the moment you get back, it's real. Yeah, and there's stuff to talk about because we've been so focused on what's present for us in our lives that, mm. um, yeah, it's not it's not every day that I get to see Mick or you. Mm. Uh, but just when when we are present with each other, there's that um, that familiarity of like just uh, it's comforting to be around you. Yeah. It's comforting comforting to be around Mikel and yeah, mm-hmm. just let loose. Absolutely. So I want to go maybe just a slightly extra step deeper here. Uh, it's it's fine now, you guys. If you're listening at this point, yep. you're ready for it now. <laughs> so one theme I've been just asking all guests on it's just the thing i never really it wasn't really intention it just came up which is well we mentioned lightly before the concept of suicide mm-hmm. right but we didn't really go into it i think we paused that for a second which is what i'd like to get i don't think i asked you in the last podcast about this either so it's probably gonna be fresh for me mm-hmm. which is the concept of death the death of yourself the death of your family your friends uh i'm not sure if you're involved with anyone right now but if you were i want to go with 
this concept and started out real yep. wide, started out real top. And just talk to me about what death has been for you in your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you've had experiences with that, how you conceptualize it, mm. how you harmonize with that, if you do, or take yeah. it wherever you want to go and for sure. go um, beneath it. The first thing that came to my head was unavoidable. We will get to go across that, that rainbow bridge at some point in our lives. Um, personally, haven't been confronted with the death of someone really close to me. I've confronted the, I've been in the conversation of what that would feel like or what, when that moment comes, how I would be with it. Mm. Um, so I'm speaking from a perspective where I don't have any firsthand experience like sure. you do. It's just honest. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely believe that, you know, this uh, identity that we have in this earthly realm will cease to exist. But the essence of who we truly are, that spark of life, mm. continues on its journey. And yeah, we're, we're all here in this moment. So there's purpose being here. So it's like, how can, can we... Um, can we fall in love with life while we're here? Because mm. that's going to death is going to come for all of us. But can we just fall in love with with living, with doing the things that you know that we we dream about, and really allow, like giving ourselves permission to go out and get it, mm. or do it, or be it. Mm. Especially in like a a time like right now, mm-hmm. we see so much pain going around the world with the Black Lives Matter movement and mm-hmm. the. George Floyd death and yep. and all these things and uh, pandemic of course and all the death that 2020, happened. Twenty twenty, man, this is such a such a year. It's been a year, yeah, right. It's been a year. Uh-huh. And hey, listen, there's apart from I mean, the the human death I've experienced on the one to one was with Matt, but uh, even with my two dogs, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily think that would be such a deeply impactful experience until you actually mm-hmm. go through it until you have to be there with a dog that you've been with since you were a little kid mm-hmm. and your your identity was attached with him and then you got to be there with him at the table and they inject that yeah i've that had food. that experience oh you've had that experience. yeah yeah how are you with that yeah it's sad man it, like there's there's grief that gets to be felt yeah um yeah it's sad and uh necessary it's just a it's like a part of life like it's it's a part of what we signed up for. So that. can we be with that? Can we give that the same reverence and attention and sacredness as we give the parts of life that we do enjoy? Do you approach pain in a similar way? Uh, are we talking physical or? Yeah. Yeah. Like in terms of, because the, I'm talking about your embracing it, the embracement mm-hmm. that you just discussed there. Is that how you also view pain or how, how, how do you? Yeah interpret pain pain it's it's a sensation how do i want to be with this sensation and the thing that comes to my head is you know since we last saw each other i've both my arms tattooed my whole back yeah he's tatted up so uh, there's a level level of physical pain that i hadn't experienced until now and um give us an idea of what it was like getting that type of work done yeah it's a it's a sensation um and it's discomforting at times but it this too shall pass <laughs> is like what I was telling myself yes, in the sir. process. And there were moments, especially in my back, it was nine hours straight of like just, Oh my gosh. The most ex- like nine out of 10 excruciating pain. And that bad just being in a, such a meditative state where I'm like, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And like knowing that th- that day in my life is a fleeting moment. Mm. And now I have a memory of it forever, but um, yeah, just not like I didn't take any, uh, painkillers or any of numbing cream. I'm, like, I'm, I'm just going to be with this. This is a part of the initiation of getting art on my body. Hmm. Uh, but everyone has a different pain threshold. For me, I would say it's quite high, but it doesn't mean I don't feel discomfort. It's just that I get to be with it in a way that uh, serves me. All comes back to that, huh? Uh-huh. What serves you, what doesn't. Yep. Yeah. I was just on uh, Sahud Kaur's podcast and we discussed this whole concept of being with pain. And... Uh, I'm not going to tell the story again because some people might have already heard it, but basically just shortcut it was that I dropped a, you know, a slow cooker, mm-hmm. uh, these big machines that you put on for like eight, 10 hours. Uh, the lid, the lid of that, when I was unpacking the box yeah. from like waist height, dropped that onto my... Like my oh, no. Stuff. Actually, you can still see it. Yeah. It's black. Damn. See that black now? Damn, bro. Yeah. It's going to uh, hurt. 
there was some blood. Anyway, short cut in the story, that night, it wasn't too bad. Like it was obviously the acute pain, but it was like later that night when I went to bed. Imagine having like a a horse's heart inserted into your tiny little toe. Mm-hmm. Like the throbbing. Yeah. And I just, I was so amazed by how painful it was. Yeah. And uh, the phrase that you just used, this too shall pass. Uh-huh. It's one of my favorite phrases of all time. And I use it in all of these moments. Uh-huh. It's like, yeah, this too shall pass. Uh-huh. No matter how painful something gets, this is mm-hmm. not going to last forever. Or I die. Yeah. See, if I, either this ends me or this ends my physical vessel here, mm-hmm. or we're going to overcome this. Yeah. So just breathe. And to segue a tiny bit from physical pain, mm. the same thing goes with emotional pain, except mm. the ego construct that we have does such, uh, does such an amazing job of wanting pr- to protect us from feeling some of those things. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. But, um, you know, if it, like having emotions show up and if we're suppressing them or diverting so that they're not there, they don't go anywhere. They're still there to be felt and experienced, but they just start to exist within our, our psyche, mm. the shadow part of our psyche that we've... Um, why do you think men, or I should say males, uh, why do you think males, because they're not necessarily all men, mm-hmm. a lot of boys that look like men in 2020, why do you think there are so many males walking around in 2020 that do suppress their because their emotions. of the culture that they were born into and the way it was set up. If you cry, you're a pussy. You're mm. weak. Weakness. Men don't show weakness. Mm. So these deeply ingrained messages in our TVs, in our movies, um, in our sports figures, like mm. it's it's showing us what, it's telling us, informing us on how masculinity should be. And that's not, not necessarily serving us anymore. As we, as more stuff comes to the surface, we get to be with it in a different way and allow ourselves to experience that type of pain as well. And if you just think about where we came from, if you're living in a tribe of 100 to 150 people right, that you live with every single day, in and out, they know everything about you. You guys rely on each other for survival. You have such a deep, intimate connection, right? not just physically within proximity, mm-hmm. but also within spiritually, which is that you rely on each other uh, for the toughest times in life. And if you're thinking about 10,000 years ago, leading back to 300,000 years ago, just imagining what the type of daily life that person had to live yeah. versus what we're doing here in this comfort. Just the fact that we have a roof over our house that doesn't move. Yeah. Right? That's Pretty crazy. That's insane. Uh-huh. So so I'm, what I'm leading towards here is the support group, the tribal rituals and the tribal leaders that would lead young males and females as well. Mm-hmm to becoming fully formed, fully developed, to becoming hard, mm. hard people. And not hard in the sense of callous and cold, yeah. but hard is in terms of resistant, in terms of resilient mm-hmm. to the fluxes of yeah. uh, of life itself or a, a neighboring tribe, or at least in this day, someone hater dropping a, dropping a you suck on yeah. your Instagram or whatever. Uh, so wh- what do you think about this? Let me ask you this question. What do you think is this society's version of a rites of passage into manhood from boy to man. As far as I can see, there's almost none. Yeah. There's like, there's an, ins- there's a pseudo one mm-hmm. and that's known as high school and university. Yeah. Right. And uh, maybe joining the workforce. Yeah. Or losing your virginity or. Yeah. yeah. Losing your virginity or, you know, get going out for your first drink. Or like mm-hmm. the, see how I'm scratching. Yeah. So, so there's not really many places or many cultures that have set up um, rites of passages for boys to become men or are shown mm. the way. And um, I've been diving into this a little bit personally. Um, there's like Native American tribes mm. where they go out into the desert and fast for four days and just be with themselves. And that is an initiation into manhood because, you know, perfect. the same thing with, uh, with sweat lodges. Okay. It's initiation. Like you, like you, you suffer in there, so you don't have to suffer out here. Yeah. So there's all these rituals that we can that um, are ancient in in practice that aren't in today's society and culture. Mm. So tapping into those primal native roots and practices uh, is one way. I feel like we can start to create uh, more strong men, and that it's a part of why I water fast because mm. it's challenging. I'm going to push myself. I'm going to, I'm going to be with the discomfort of not eating food and see what that does to my character. 
and how I'm able to show up in the stressful environments when shit's hitting the fan and really hold the space of loving and passion. And through this discipline, yeah. what, what do you find? What do you find happens as a result of going through all this hard shit? Yeah, that my everyday isn't so hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not. Like the I'm I'm challenging myself, whether it's in the gym, whether it's water fasting, whether it's uh I haven't done this yet, but like a Vipassana, like it's ten days of silent meditation. Challenging yourself in those ways makes going back to your life, in my opinion, a lot easier and a lot more better to handle because you've you've pushed yourself in these certain certain ways and that's what these rites of passages do for boys to men they they challenge them and um really allow them to um really claim their masculinity and their manhood yeah everything you're saying here is this is like my topic like yeah. this, or this is what i say my topic the one that i resonate with so much mm-hmm. because uh it's what i say is like non-existent that the, one of the things that Young males need the most is non-existent. Seek and you shall find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's coming because it's like a, a necessary uh, response to that void. That some someone's got to you got to change it. Mm-hmm. Like you just got to change. And so I love everything that you just discussed on. Is just lighting up so many things in my mind. Yeah. And and so I would uh, I just want to tap on one relation point. There's a question I want to ask you about setting up uh, a setup. So. But just before we get to this setup, you talked about the water fasting. Yeah. It's the same thing with my cold plunging and cold showers that I've been doing for like 2.3 years every single morning. Yeah. And people often like they they think it's like it's excessive or it's uh, it's unnecessary to be that disciplined. And they're only looking at the pain of it. Mm -hmm. But at a certain point, what you realize is that when you commit to something that's difficult and that becomes a part of you, first off, it no longer becomes as difficult, right? Just through repetition repetition but also that discipline allows you to be so much freer and everything else you could do Mm -hmm. you you said before that it makes everyday life so much easier yeah there's nothing there are not that many things in your everyday life that are as difficult as getting out of a nice warm bed into a straight cold shower (laughs) there's not that many things right so your emotional set point gets leveled Mm -hmm. so i love that you mentioned yeah and like to put to give another spin on this, it's the things that polarize you in your everyday, like that work colleague that has has some opinions that really just like trigger you. Mm. You're not so bothered by it because you've already yeah. you've challenged yourself in in numerous ways. Uh, yeah, the challenge, powerful. the challenge. Yeah. Like this, I, I love this so much because I've I've been having uh, envisionments and ideas of what's coming, what's the next. Uh, I talked to you before about sagas and evolutions and stages because this is such a key point. And something that I know that you'll be, uh, that you're moving towards so much. But I was going to say, I said before, set up. If you could set up the ideal rite of passage, ritual training mm-hmm. camp, ritual uh, process, you know, that type of thing, what, what, would that, what would that look like? Is that a, if you could design it, like money's not an object, mm-hmm. time's not an object. It's, it's funny that you bring that up because I'm, I was meant to, before COVID hit, I was meant to be doing a rites of passage out in Death Valley in California this year. Okay. Which is four days of water fasting um, run by a Native American uh, tribe out there. And, um, you know, until I've experienced that, then, you know, I don't, I don't really have a reference point to say that, you know, this is the thing that would work. I know the things that I already implement in my life, mm. the water fasting, the uh, ice, ice baths, the um, infrared saunas, like just sitting in there and allowing that to be a ceremony in itself. Uh, like all those things are, um, they already help how I show up in my everyday anyway. So going through a certain initiation set point where it's like from this moment forth, I was forever different um, is I think super powerful. Um, so yeah, to really answer your question, I haven't, like I, until I do something, sure. I don't. I won't know, but uh, I'll be able to tell you once I've I've stepped over that threshold. I'll leave that for next time. Yeah, then. we'll come back to that next time. But you know, like uh, you said, it's something you've been looking into. Is you're gonna do your own yep. Native American thing? I I'm, you don't even know how like how much this makes me smile inside, and how much it makes my heart smile mm-hmm. because I've taken so much of the Spartan philosophy, and while of course there are. Hollywood cinema likes to portray Spartans as these heroes. 
they were actually master slave races, but yeah. I think that's aside for a second. <laughs> yeah, they, but uh, they, <laughs> they enslaved a lot of people, but uh, so did everyone else at that time. Anyway, yeah. that, that was the time. But but in terms of looking at their minimalism uh, ethos, in terms of their uh, discipline, it's someone I always look at. And have you heard of the Agoge? Have you heard of the Agoge? I haven't. So Tell the, me. The Agoge was the name for the ritual in which that Spartan boys were taken at roughly seven years old, five, anywhere between five to seven years old, and they were put through this decade-long training program, essentially, to turn them into warriors, turn them into men. And no one, no boys were exempt from this, right? This was, from the moment you came out of the womb, mm-hmm. the city determined whether you lived. They would, they would determine your physical fitness, they would determine yep. the baby's uh, virality, and if you weren't, you weren't fit enough, you were taken to this valley, the Death Valley, where you chucked off a cliff. Yeah. And they'll just chuck these babies off the cliff. It's wild. Yeah. You probably can do it today. Probably not. <laughs> but I'm sure there's someone out there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a uh-huh. spotted life forever. You know? Yeah. Uh, but so anyways, they had this thing called the Agoga where they would take, it's their process for transforming boys to men. And it was just horrific. You know, it was horrific, the things they put them through, the starvation, yeah. uh, pitting each other, pitting them against each other for in battle and, and uh, ridiculous feats of of uh, resilience in terms of outdoor and all this stuff and not giving them enough clothing and all this stuff and all to the point where they could get to 20 or 21 and then be adorned with you are now a Spartan warrior. Yeah. And it's like, to me, if there's one stage in history that I would like to be reborn back into, yeah. it's either that mm-hmm. or it's into feudal Japan and going and learning what it meant to be a samurai. Yeah. But what connects these two things together is the warrior mindset, the mm-hmm. warrior class. And while they're not perfect, while, of course, there's a lot of other shit that's going on around them, I'm not mm-hmm. trying to celebritize them yeah, or you know, make them glorify them any more than they need to be, it's the key. And you take the keys, right, mm-hmm. of what you see, the best of what you see around you, and let's take that into here and now. Yep. So that's so why I like it's- uh, It's like, what did the Spartans embody that you would like to embody more in yourself and yeah. in your life? Let me, let me borrow some of that medicine. Let me tap into those those myths and those stories and learn how that, that might how that could serve me in my everyday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, are you, is that how you approach your life as well? Yeah. Like you just see things, you go, I'll take that and I'll use that. Yep. I'll borrow that. Like what why is it that I'm drawn to this this person? What is it that they represent that I would like to represent? Mm-hmm. And then do you find yourself going through an organic synthesization process yeah. of where now that becomes your own thing? Yep. Just like seeing it, seeing what's um, sparked inside of me as I, as I witness it. Mm. Okay. Let me embody that feeling right now. Let me ground that in. Mm. Okay. When I go out on um, my day, let me, let me just walk around with that in the back of my mind, like just mm. power. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we really resonate with that. This is something else we have not talked about before. Mm-hmm. This is how I live my life. Yeah. It's like, that's why I'm so drawn to uh, it's any form of anything. If there's any form of anything that I see that that's 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 key, like that's on point, mm-hmm. that's something that I would like to. And you can take that from anything. And that's why, like, from uh, anime, yeah. watching various anime, taking these qualities from. Because I think if I'm trying to unpack it psychologically, it's like, what what is what am I looking for there? What are we looking for yep. here? Why did I reach out to you? Mm, because there's uh, there's this thing that you embody in social dynamics that I wanted to learn from, that I was admiring about you. So I, I got out of my own way, sent you a message. I'm like, hey, man, love the work that you're putting out in the world. Like, keep it up. Like, and just seeing what you embody, I'm like, how can I embody some more, some more of those um, social traits in my interactions? Right. Yeah. And likewise, with your dancing... Yeah, uh, I've always loved dancing, and I've always done done dancing since I was really young. Mm-hmm. But I never used to put it on my Instagram. But for uh, not for today because I was so there was so much tech here I had to set up. But before podcasts at home, uh, I'm always jamming out. I'm yeah. always I'm always rocking out. And it wasn't until I had seen uh, there was it was one of the first ones. It was, I'm not sure what the song was. It was in here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm even messaged you yeah. about it. I might have messaged you about it. It's a long time ago yeah. now. But just say that that dance video you did was really cool. Mm-hmm. And whether I told you directly or not, it's like it was. Yeah. And so from that point on, I started showing people on Instagram the hype up to the podcast yeah. of me dancing. 
Mm-hmm. Not and do you know See, that like that's the medicine of me. It's like I'm either the the inspiration permission slip for you to allow your expression to become more fully expressed, or I'm the um, permission slip or yeah the permission for you to judge, mm. so that you can be polarized either way. And mm. I know that whenever I step out of my comfort zone and share some of my art or my dancing or my poetry, mm. that people are going to be polarized either way. And knowing that it's for the people that are looking for that inspiration so that they can tap into that part of themselves and give their medicine to the world. Absolutely. It's like when you when you see someone else doing what you want to be doing, it makes it so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, we were talking about just before the podcast started about the state of dating in 2020 and why I've had to shift away from that and why the inception of this new podcast. It's like it, it is a – some of my followers and clients from that space were – kind of freaking out a little bit because mm-hmm. like what does that mean for them a lot of them interpreted it for themselves it's like well shit if adam if adam isn't like 100 percent all balls in deep of this now what does it mean for me mm-hmm. i was trying to reassure them that listen this is this is from a long-term development perspective of where i see my ability to deliver my best work going through it doesn't mean anything uh for you guys but just take the best of what you did get from me yep. and keep living your lives. Keep doing yep. the best you can as long as you're being respectful, direct, congruent, and authentic. You'll be just fine. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and I'm really glad that you have began to shift gears because, yes, you get to serve this community and helping them develop their social skills. But, you know, my experience of you, the wealth of knowledge that you have goes far beyond dating and social dynamics. And I, I feel like the more you speak on it, the more it's embodied, the more that you get to serve... And a different part of humanity, a different type of audience that um, is needs guidance mm. or needs needs those powerful uh, mentors like yourself. I really appreciate yeah. that, man. It's uh, it means a lot coming from you, yeah. Because yeah, you are you are very. I, I trust people that are well traveled for the most part, mm-hmm. and that's not just because. To your going right back to the beginning of this podcast, it's not because you've ticked off so many countries. Mm-hmm. It's because of the experiences you had to have. To even get to those countries, yeah. to be in those countries. Glenn once told me about when he was in Vancouver, he went through a, a, a brief stint, I'm not sure how brief it was, of some pretty deep depression, mm-hmm. in which he just didn't want to go out. Yep. Uh, do you, just for those that haven't heard that story, do you want to- Yeah, it was, um, I would probably, I would class it as anxiety. Like I just, I had been traveling for so long, like four months in, in Europe and in South America, and that when I got to Canada- all I wanted to do was just be in my own space and own energy and uh, resolve some of these emotions that kept popping up during my travels that I was avoiding facing off with. And um, that three months that I lived in Vancouver was was powerful because it was really, really the beginning of my relationship with myself to my emotions and allowing them to be what they are and not judging them as wrong or bad or that I'd done something wrong that they were showing up because they didn't feel pleasant. But just, you know, just acknowledging that they existed and they were there. And that's a part of the human experience. Mm. Allowing myself to go through that transformative process of unkinking the hose, which we'll call the hose anxiety, unkinking anxiety, mm. allowing that to move through my body. Mm. That's so a good that, analogy. Yeah. I like that one. So that, you know, the, the people that are stepping into anxiety or quote unquote depression, they have a reference point for someone that was able to push through that mm. and to move through it. That can be a mirror once again to let them know, you know, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. That's a great analogy. And even just talking on the emotional battles that we have inside ourselves, Mm -hmm. there is probably, I'd like to get your perspective on this, better better and worse ways of addressing that. Mm. How do you recommend, if we could take some tactical tips here for Jeffrey at home? (laughs) Yeah. It's like, shit, man. I hear what G's saying. It's truth. Yeah. I fucking, I hate myself or I hate my mom. I hate my dad or I just have so much anger inside mm-hmm. me or, you know, whatever it might be. What's the tactical tip to help that guy right now in terms of unkinking that? Yep. That hose. Three, two, two tactical tips. Okay. One, meditation. Yep. Just being with the present moment. Mm-hmm. What am I feeling? What am I feeling? I'm like, the. Uh, what am I allowing? I'm allowing carpet. I'm allowing... Yeah, I'm allowing 
hands. Like just doing, saying I'm allowing and then whatever's on your mind to come through is a really powerful way to tap into your subconscious mind and allow what's there to come move through and come mm. through. And a second tactical tip is movement. Moving, moving the body, moving the energy around because it stagnates. And when we dance, when we uh, engage in physical exercise, we allow, we, we shake up some of that energy that's stored within all different parts of our body. And that's, that's all everything is. Yep. As Paul was describing on uh, this, this week's, Paul Lissio was describing on this week's podcast, just before Glenn's, uh, it's like everything in this life, he described it beautifully, as Paul does, that nothing is missing in the universe. It's all energy and it's nothing's complete. missing. Things are just transforming and transmuting into different form. And so when you say you've got to shake up that energy within you, it's, if you can view it that way, another way that might help people to visualize that if you're if you've been anyone who's been close to uh, uh, either Indian philosophy or if not even Indian philosophy, just Zen philosophy or even watching some anime like Naruto when they talk about chakra, right, that might be a little bit of a distant idea for a lot of people. Like that, that might be a little hard for them to, yep. to kind of grab onto. But if you can take what Glyn just said about shaking up energy within me and realizing that everything around me and everything, if everything around me is energy, why would I be any different from that? Yeah. A hundred percent. And getting it through movement. Just, uh, it wasn't yesterday, day before, uh, as I was editing, I was like deep immersed in editing this recent podcast. Mm -hmm. And I really just didn't want to work out. So, and that's really rare for me. For me, uh, coming from a personal training background mm -hmm. and just been always been active my entire life. It's like, I'd rather be moving. Like, yeah. I'd rather not be editing. But when you're like, you got a piece of gold here, just like this podcast is. Yeah. It's like, you just want to, but you realize, you know, I'm, it's probably about time that I take a break here. Yeah. And having the awareness like, man, I'm, I'm feeling quite static. Hmm. Or like I'm just, you know, just the energy is just, eh. Yeah. Movement. Like spark that up. Always. Rev the engine. Always. Yeah. And uh, on Instagram, I put up this little story and just saying that, because this is something I used to do with my clients when they'll come in, like say 6 p.m. on a Friday night and they have a ske the schedule session, but they've had a, a fucking tough week and a tough day. And they just say, they say, Adam, I don't, I don't, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling, I rocked up because, you know, I paid for this session, but mm -hmm. I really just don't want to work out today. Mm -hmm. I say, listen, I totally feel you. I understand that. Let's just do 10 minutes. And if after 10 minutes you ain't feeling it, we'll just go, I'll give you a massage. We'll go now, we'll do, we'll go yeah. to the top room, put on some chill music, I'll give you a massage, right? She's like, all right, all right, we'll do 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. The amount of times that 10 minutes didn't turn into the full 60, it's like you can barely even count on one hand. Mm -hmm. Once you get started, once you get moving, Shift that energy, as you said, yeah. you feel so much better. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to present it to them like that. You know, let's just focus on the next 10 minutes and then we can we can talk about the next 50 minutes after this. I call Maybe. making a deal with yourself. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, and, it's, and it works for me. Mm -hmm. Just like to this day, when I said I didn't want to, I didn't, really didn't want to leave editing. I was so deeply immersed in it. But yeah. I said, just do 10 minutes. I got 10 minutes in, just doing some core on the crash mat. And then 25 minutes later and I'm fucking rocking and I'm blasting it. Yeah. I'm like I feel... Not only did I make a much better decision for myself, but I feel so much better. My editing is going to be better now. Mm -hmm. And it was all stemmed off, hey, just do 10 minutes. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like working ways, uh, making deals with yourself, tapping into your own psychology. Yep. Uh, do you relate to this? Do you relate? Do you ever treat yourself as like kind of a bit of a game? Yeah. 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 A lot. Like uh, finding out ways to hack your own patterns or your own... Um, Self-sabotage, really. Yeah, you're on self-sabotage. Yeah. Sure. Can, do you know? Um, you're good? I'm good, man. Yeah. Yeah, so like just making those little deals like 10 minutes and then how do you be How do you self-sabotage? Hmm. When it comes to fasting, there, there might be some days where I'm like, I'm not feeling this and I committed to 40 hours hmm. and we're on hour 14. There's 36 <laughs> hours to go. Just go to lunchtime. Go to lunchtime and then we'll have some sparkling water. That'll be a treat. Hmm. And just like setting those little, you know, let's focus on the hour. Let's do it. Like how do you how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Absolutely. So just applying that to, to everything that um, I have resistance and realizing that on the other side of the resistance is my power. Yeah. Like with everything, whether it's training, whether it's putting out that, uh, that, edgy sort of Instagram post where you're expressing a 
a, a point of view that you think might trigger some people mm-hmm. like just moving into the resistance and knowing that on the other side of it is your power that you get to reclaim and that's your breakthrough couldn't agree more yeah just couldn't agree more with that everything i've ever found i've seen and just taken off my life just when i see other people other people that i talk to that have done incredible things it never came through their comfort zone never came through the thing that they felt was going to be the easiest way of doing this. Mm -hmm. They tried to do it the most efficient and easy way as possible. But if the things you're chasing after aren't scaring the shit out of you Mm -hmm. and aren't challenging you to the point where you're questioning the very fiber of your soul, why are you even doing Mm -hmm. it? And I feel like the things like water fasting or ice baths or saunas, they're microcosms of the macrocosm of your life. Yes. So it's like, I'm going to push through the resistance of sitting in this cold tub for seven, eight minutes and um, on the other side of it, I'm like, who am I going to be? I'm going to be the person that is able to do the thing even when resistance shows up. And I'm going to take that and apply it to everything that I want to go after. So good. Yeah. So good. Ah, yeah. shit. That is, uh, you did get that on t-shirt right there or you did get that printed <laughs> and put that up in somebody's house. That's going to be in someone's house. That was, ah. Mm-hmm. Oh. If you're not watching the YouTube version of this, I'm smiling like an absolute idiot. Mm -hmm. It's so good to hear someone else speak in that way. Because in a time in life where society is just trying to make life as easy as possible, Mm -hmm. yet we're seeing the weakest people coming out of it. So you you think people would put this together. If we have the most amount of comfort that you've ever Mm -hmm. seen across the race and the time of the human race, Mm -hmm. we are more comfortable than we've ever been. Yep. Yeah, we're also the sickest. Yes. We're also not just the sickest physically, the sickest mentally. Uh-huh. You think that might be like yeah. a, hey. You got to think about it. Us humans are addicted to comfort. Yeah. We're addicted to the dopamine hit that we get from eating cookies. Yeah. We're addicted to, you know, sleeping in or yeah. like not wanting to leave bed because it's so comfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't want to be in the cold because it's, no. it's cold. Yeah. Like not anything that's heat. discomforting, why would you want to lean into it? But, you know. That's how we that's how we grow and evolve is by challenging ourselves and moving through resistance. Us. Yeah. Us. That is. I would say mic drop, but these are new microphones. We can't so. drop these mics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, shit. So I mean we could talk about literally this topic all day long. Mm-hmm. So what I might do now is that as we start to bring this to a wrap and bring this to a sum. I always like to bring it back to the person that's listening to this and because you can listen to an entire podcast and so many gold, so much gold can be dropped and has been dropped. But I always want to make sure that it ends on something that someone's actually going to do. Right? Yeah. That, that you and I are a little bit different. When we listen to a podcast, we've got our Evernotes out or you got your journal out, yeah. if not physically, mentally. No, the amount of times I have to pause something, I'm like, notes. Yes. Yeah. And then taking that inform- information and then how can I turn that into art, mm. distill it even more? <sighs> Jesus, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, the distillation. Yeah. Yeah, you are just, you're saying, Jesus, can I stay here tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Spare room. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. Um, so, so what I'd like to do, what I'd like to ask you, in, in theme with this podcast and the tagline of Eternal Energy is to dive into who you are and to evolve beyond. In this wrapping here, if you've got someone who's, let's take the guy in mind or the girl in mind who's open now, it's like, okay, I've heard, I've heard Glenn talk mm-hmm. and I'm ready. What's one, maybe two or three things, just the top things that come to mind that you would say that you would recommend someone who could do right now, could do today, if they're waking up this morning, to be able to dive deeper into who they are and evolve beyond? Mm-hmm. What would be Glenn's recommendation for that? Keeping in theme with um, how this podcast has gone, uh, who in my environment or in my network is inspiring me? figuring out who those people are, starting a dialogue with them and just reaching out mm. and realizing what it, what it is that they embody that you want to embody within yourself. Mm. Two, where in my life is there a resistance and where can I claim my power? Yeah. Like if it's in, if it's in health, like, oh, you know, I really just don't want to, I don't want to go to the gym or I don't want to start eating right because I'm resistant to changing my own habits, then, you know, there's power in shifting that. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
and three. So Keth is not a three. Yeah, no, there is. That uh, uh, could be like a hundred, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure. just trying to find what's most relevant. What's coming to me right now is, um, where do I get to love myself more? Yeah. And like just taking inventory of the parts in your life that are, that are reflecting back to you. Hey, you get to love yourself a little bit more in this this space. The relationships where you, you're looking for acknowledgement, you get to acknowledge yourself. Hmm. If someone was to actually act upon those three yeah. things, and remember guys, it's not about what you do today. Right? It's about what you do for the next three months, six months, 12 months, but there is only today to start. So if you were to just take... Sorry if I'm parking in your oh, you're good. present spot. Uh, cars is coming in. Good timing. Yeah. Uh, if you could actually just do three those three things like Glenn just said and just yeah. start small, like don't try and don't try and jump the river. Let's build a bridge here. Mm-hmm. And let's say uh, take three of what Glenn just said right there and think about one thing that I can do within those, just one of each. Put that down in your little journal. Say, hey, this week, mm-hmm. just on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm just going to do these three things. Mm-hmm. Something as small as that. And I'm sure you can always reach out to Glenn. Yep. And uh, just great organic segue. Where can they reach out to you? Yeah, just Instagram at Glenn Cash Money. Um, yeah, that's mainly where that's I'm at. Spot. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and on if Facebook. There is, yeah. And on Facebook, yeah. yeah. And of course, guys, that'll be down in the show links as well. But I'm sure, uh, I mean, Glenn's, uh, Glenn's a popular guy, but he'll get back to you when he can. Mm-hmm. And if you just want to, either with him or myself, and just say, hey, actually, as a result of, listening to this podcast i'm actually changing my life that's what this podcast is for like we don't i don't sit down here with people as inspirational as powerful as glenn is to just masturbate over things like we're not just sitting here talking about bachelor in paradise or uh what happened on master chef last sunday mm-hmm. unless there was like something really <laughs> nerdy scientific we're yeah. talking about but we don't we're not just like gossiping about bullshit here this is such a rare moment in time uh, for all of us. And so I would hope that all the audience members and anyone who's come across this would actually honor the time that Glenn's been uh, so so charitable and so uh, I'm so grateful for, for him to have given to us and to myself that I hope there's uh, the majority of you would actually do something with it. He's already given me mine. So I, it's like, so a three day water fast. It's happening. It's on. <laughs> it's on. It's done. It's 100% yep. done. Yeah. And, and that's just what I do. It's like when I say that every single week for 12 weeks, I'm going down to the ocean and we're doing a cold plunge. It's done. Yeah. It's like when you say something, you do it. So it is. Yeah. 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 And it's just Powerful. how it's going And there's probably resistance that shows up when you say you're going to do a three-day water fast. It's, oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to show up at different points. Yeah. But being able to move through it and knowing that on the other side of the 70 hours is your power. That you get to reclaim. Well, let's make the commitment yeah. here then. Let's say uh, Sunday and you said starting at night's best. Yep. All right, let's say Sunday, Sunday night. night. We're skipping yep. Sunday. Wait, so do I eat Sunday night or not? Yep. Yeah. I'll take you through. I've got a whole process that makes oh, this real streamlined. Beauty. All right, yep. well, then that's what we're doing. We're, it's currently Saturday here right now. Mm-hmm. So we'll be doing this Sunday. And so, listen, guys, that's that's my, it's like, as the welcome video on my channel yeah. is literally me delivering the welcome while taking a cold plunge because I wanted to show people I'm not just going to talk about what this channel is about. I want to show you what it's about. Yeah. Same thing here. And that's what I want you guys to be doing. And I would love to hear your feedback. I'm sure Glenn would like to hear your feedback when you actually do something. And so in wrapping this up, Glenn, I think in the first podcast we did, I mentioned something similar to this, which is that because we had, if not physically met before that podcast, I think we had. Maybe a couple months before that. Yeah. Yeah, we had. Yeah. Because I remember saying in the podcast that even in that podcast, you were you were a lot more grounded, especially even the way you began that podcast, which is setting an intent point, yeah. which is cool. I did that sneakily before. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sure. Uh-huh. Um, I got to say this time around, it's like I talked about sagas before, talked mm-hmm. about evolutions. It's happened again. Now, I think you, there might be a part of your ego that would be disappointed if I didn't say that. And I'm not saying that to appease your ego. I'm saying that to show how your ego is so non-existent. Mm-hmm. How, if that's the one thing that I could feel through this discussion that we had here today, is that there's so much less of Glenn here, but there's so and much you know more what? at the same time. Even throughout the process of doing this podcast, um, 
there are, are moments when my ego shows up where it's like, oh, I want to say the right thing, but it's like getting out of that way and just delivering is um, the game, the internal game I've been in the last one and a half, two hours. Right. Yeah. So you're con- so that that's perfect. I mean, that's that's the humility to show people that you're still you're always constantly working, and that's what I could feel here. But I just felt like there was uh, there's less Glenn, which means there was more. Yeah. It's like there was less, even le- not that to say before that you were, we probably wouldn't have been in the same room if there was that much mm-hmm. ego there. I just <laughs> I just don't have to hang out with those type of people. Yeah. But to show you that what you've done over the last eighteen months. I've only got a couple, a little glimpse of it here today, but the day in and day out of whatever you've been doing the past 18 months has really shown through. And I really thank you for not only your time here, but your energy and passing that on, passing that on to the future generations that can pick this up on either where they're listening or they're watching. But this is why I'm doing this because of people like you. So thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you give me the platform to come on and express myself to your audience and to have these, these conversations where you're so good at asking questions. Um, like even before doing, sitting down for the podcast, I had no idea what you wanted to dive into, yeah. but I knew you would ask questions that would have me uh, dive deep within my own consciousness, own psyche and um, bring out some hopeful value to your audience. And yeah, I just love it. It's been 18 months since we were last on here and it's like a little time stamping out own progression like mm. I'll, I'll go back and watch the first one and be like all right so this is the version of me i was 18 months ago and this is who i am today and so good. yes it's powerful every time i get to connect with you and um to see you shift into um your new channel and serving a new audience in a in a still the same way but a new way is is really beautiful to witness and see because um like i said you, you have so much more to value than just this niche of dating and social dynamics and mm. um that's now starting to to come through and well, harvest yeah yeah only possible with people like you and i actually look really look forward to in this new space doing more work with you yeah and uh doing some cool sure. shit uh, outside outside of podcasts as well so yep. we've got some ideas there and my friends um i'm truly grateful for that feedback i really appreciate it thanks man and so my friends, Thank this you is where we're going to be wrapping this up. And as I said before, everything we've talked about will be in the show links, best found at eternalenergy.blog. It's formatted a lot more nicely than in, say, Apple or Spotify. It can look a bit jumbled there. So, uh, and I really encourage you to connect on Glenn's universe and to take some of the stuff he's talked, to you about, talked about here today and really move it forward in your own life. So with that being said, I wish you all the best in your lives. Much peace and much joy. Boom. That was nice, bro. Yeah. Oh. All right, my friends, that wraps up this session of Eternal Energy Podcast. I'm very grateful to have you here. I'm very grateful for your presence. And if you guys do have some feedback, I'm very grateful for that as well. Just slide me a DM on the gram at uitang1, double O-I, tang1. Or you can also send me a longer email, a little more context, at eternalenergy.blog. There's a contact form in the about section. So just slide me an email there. And of course, if you are looking to begin your journey of meditation and diving a little bit deeper into yourself, the new album, Guided Meditation, Eternal Energy, is now released and available at eternalenergy.blog. And also, if you are looking to donate something just small directly towards this show, you can also hit that PayPal link, top right-hand corner. And anything that you do donate through that is extremely appreciated. Just goes back to supporting everything that's going on here. And just in wrapping here, my friends, as we're so new and so fresh into this journey, I'm looking to capture as much eternal energy as possible. So if you've got a guest that you feel like would go down real good on this show, either slide me a DM about who that might be, or even better, you should reach out to them and mention what's going on here and say, hey, there's a show. I think Adam would love to have you on. I think you guys would really start to rap together. And I feel like that would be a great way of getting even more value. And uh, yeah, so reach out to them. Reach out to your favorite person to mention the show and maybe we'll get together. And with all this being said, I wish you the absolute best in your life. Whatever you're dealing with, just know there's some guy out there who believes in you. Things got a little emotional there. Uh, Much peace and much joy.